Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. We're going to wait one more minute for everyone to be able to access the event, and then we'll start. All right, I think we can get started. Hello and welcome everyone. We are so excited to have you here for the launch of a fantastic treasure trove of practical resources and information on advancing women's digital and financial inclusion. And you are the first ones to see this tool. Uh, it's, uh, its name, it's Inclusive Digital Economies and Gender Equality Playbook. And my colleagues are in fact, just right now dropping the link to the playbook in the chat. So you can click on it and be the first ones to, to lay eyes on it. Uh, my name is Diana Deja. I'm Finequities Facilitator and we, I will be moderating today's session. And just a quick um, introduction to Finequity. Finequity is a community of practice dedicated to advancing women's economic empowerment and women's financial inclusion. We are uh, convened by CGAP at the World Bank and we have over 2,500 members in our community and we are delighted to partner with UNCDF today on the launch of this playbook. Um, I'm joined today by a great lineup of speakers and my colleagues. Uh, yes, this is the slide with the speakers. I will not introduce them one by one because they will be introducing themselves when they speak, but just to tell you uh, who is with us today, uh, Antonique, uh, Fresh, who is the gender lead at CGAP, myself, Jagdeep, who is the country lead in Papua New Guinea for UNCDF, Maria, who is the regional manager for Asia at UNCDF, and Nandini, who is senior advisor for inclusive digital economies also with UNCDF. And here is the plan, the agenda for, for today. We will start with brief introductions. Uh, my colleague Antonique will uh, set the context for the playbook and how it situates itself within the industry and other initiatives that are going on. We will then hear from Nandini a brief overview of how, you know, what the playbook looks like and how you can get the most out of it. And then we will hear from Jagdeep and Maria, very concrete examples, uh, two very interesting projects, one in Papua New Guinea and one in Bangladesh, uh, that kind of brings the playbook to life. You can see uh, by hearing from them uh, how the resources, the tools, the information in the playbook can be useful to you in your initiatives related to advancing women's digital and financial inclusion. We will have some participatory exercises sprinkled throughout the session. So please pay attention, stay with us uh, at all times. Um, and then we will have uh, a brief opportunity for Q&A uh, with all of the participants. And I would like to ask you that as we go along through the presentations, you drop your questions in the chat. Uh, make sure you address the questions in the chat. There is a drop down. You can you say to panelists and attendees so we can see the questions. Uh, you can direct them to the speakers or just uh, general questions. But as we go along, please put those questions in there. And at the end, we'll save a little bit of time to, to go through some of them. Uh, and then we'll wrap it all up. We have 60 minutes to do everything. So probably uh, it's best to get started. But before we dive into the content, we would like to start with one of these participatory exercises that I mentioned uh, we, have, uh, we have in store for you. So on your screen, we are going to do this through Slido. Uh, so you have a few ways to, to um, get there. You can either point your phone camera on the 
to the on, on the QR on the on the screen or go to slido.com and introduce this code 101866 to access um, the question. But our question to you really to kind of put us in the mindset that is required for this for this amazing resource is what does a future in which women are equal actors in inclusive digital economies look like? What do you think? You can use one word, you can use two words, three words. Just tell us what what do you think that future might look like? And and Rose, I think um, I'm not able to see if people were able to uh, to get there, but let's try. I think in the chat you also have the actual link uh, to Slido. That's another way to get there. Uh, but my colleagues will. Um, will show us on the screen. All right, we have four people who have entered. We need at least 15 entries. So let's see if we can get there. But uh, the future is fair, is empowering, it's vibrant and diverse. Six, all right. Let's get a few more entries. Again, you can, you can on your browser, you can go to slido.com, enter the code, which is 101866, and we'll take you to where this question is posed. All right, eight answers. Equitable, balanced, aware of the niche needs of financing women, empowering, there is equal participation and adoption of digital financial services. So that future is quite bright. We're not there yet. I was hoping somebody would put, we are out of our jobs if that future is actualized. All right, a couple more entries maybe. We will save this information and maybe at our next event, we can, we can see how close we got. But we really hope that the playbook and the wealth of the resources included in the playbook, coupled with the collective knowledge and power of the Finequity community is one of the ways that can get, can get us to, to that future. So without further ado, I would like to invite my colleague Antonique to share opening remarks and um, describe a little bit more about the context of, of the playbook. Thank you, Antonique. Thanks very much, Diana, and uh, and good afternoon, good evening, uh, good morning to uh, all of you. It's great to have so many of you uh, joined in on this uh, very important topic. Today, the day itself, is the launch of the Generation Equality Forum in Paris, not too far from where I am. And, and I think it's a, a great opportunity for us to have this launch of the playbook at this specific moment. Um, for those of you who haven't heard of the Generation Equality Forum yet, um, it's a civil society centered, multi-stakeholder and real global gathering for gender equality. It's convened by UN Women um, with uh, great support from the governments of Mexico and France. That's why it's currently launched in, in Paris. But there is a great partnership also of civil society, um, youth and everyone seeking to address inequality issues. But they're not only talking about it, and I think that's the key uh, important point about this. They're all making commitments um, in the run-up to the Gender Equality Forum today, um, and Nandini will talk a little bit more about the different areas people are making commitments in and how it ties to our world of uh, financial inclusion. But what we are very concerned about is that this doesn't remain a talk shop. Um, big fora are wonderful to raise attention, but then the action is where, you know, the rubber hits the road. So this specific opportunity that we have to help those who make commitments to see how they can translate those commitments in reality, I think is where this um, opportunity is so, um, is so great. Um, so Finequity as um, 
uh, Diana already introduced is a community of practice uh, where we do try to connect with one another, to share um, resources, to learn from each other, but then also to influence actual practice on the ground. And I think this playbook that we're sharing with you today with some real life um, illustrations of how um, they uh, how the playbook can actually um, uh, do its work in two country context, I think is a, is a great um, uh, illustration to you how this could also be useful in your own context. Um, Finequity has already contributed to the playbook itself by um, crowdsourcing ideas, resources, examples, which you will find back in there. And of course, it um, continues to play a role in making sure that the resource and the examples are further being disseminated uh, for uptake uh, by a large portion of the financial inclusion practitioners. So I'm very excited about having the opportunity to, uh, to open this session today. I think we'll already learn a lot throughout the session, but then also the resources that you find in the playbook, and I hope you've already clicked on it, are uh, quite amazing. So with that, um, I would like to um, hand it back to Diana to get us started. Thank you, Diana. Thank you so much, Antonik. Uh, very exciting. And uh, Nandini, show us how it works <laughs> and how, you know, maybe a little bit of the history and anything that, that you'd like to share of how we got here, but definitely how users can use the playbook and get mo the most out of it. Thank you. Thanks, Diana. And thank you, Antonique, for that inspiring opening remarks. Uh, it's uh, it, it's been wonderful to partner with Finequity and to to pour this launch, and also for all of their amazing feedback they gave. I think something like forty eight pages of feedback on the playbook. So I'm I'm incredibly grateful for that. Um, I'm Nandini Hariyareshwara. I'm the uh, lead gender focal point for UNCDF's Inclusive Digital Economies Division. I'm very, very happy to be here today with all of you to be helping launch uh, the playbook. Uh, Rose, do you want to put the slides on the screen? Um, my job today is, is a little bit of an impressive one. One is to just introduce UNCDF to you quickly, for those of you that don't know about UNCDF, um, talk about our commitment to gender equality, and then our commitment to Generation Equality Forum and our participation. And then most importantly, why you're all here is to introduce the playbook and, and how to use the playbook. So very quickly, UNCDF, if you don't know who we are, we're a small UN agency. Um, our Inclusive Digital Economies Division is focused on promoting digital economies that leave no one behind and we build them with stakeholders on the ground. We have deep relationships, public, private, and civil society in the countries that we work in. We work in mostly LDCs and right now the count is at 28. Next slide please. Our work to try to develop uh, in inclusive digital economies uses four work streams. And I mentioned them here because that's how we've structured our playbook across our four work streams. Um, first is on skills and trying to develop the skills of customers to be most empowered through build, the building of inclusive digital economies. Those can be digital skills, financial skills, um, autonomy, agency, things like that. Second is around innovation. Are the products that are being developed in in the countries that we work in, the innovations, actually addressing the needs of marginalized communities, especially women. Third is infrastructure. Do, is there access to phones, internet, energy, uh, digital payments for women, for marginalized communities? This is a big fo focus on infrastructure. And lastly, in terms of policy and regulation, are, are we using all the levers of policy and regulation to address the challenges and creating an uh, enabling environment to address the challenges of the first three and to accomplish the visions of the governments that we partner with in building their inclusive digital economies? Next slide, please. So within that, we have a vision for, for gender equality. It's that the inclusive digital economies that we help to co-build, reduce poverty, increase resilience, and improve economic opportunities for women. Next slide. 
So we have an approach, we call it the women builders of digital economies approach. That's what we're trying to do in the economies that we work in. It it's, has a five prong strategy. One is decreasing the gender digital divide. The second is solving problems for women for di with digital and financial products. The third is lowering barriers for women MSMEs via technology. The fourth is supporting policymakers to use incentives and sex segregated data to increase women's digital and financial autonomy. And the last is to co-create a gender inclusive digital economy, leadership and labor force. Next slide. So we're honored to be co-leaders of the Generation Equality Forum. As Antonique mentioned, this is one of the big moments for Generation Equality Forum. Next slide, please. It's a group of actors across the world, member states, UN agencies and international organizations, civil society organizations, youth led organizations and private companies of philanthropies that are working across these six areas that you see to the left focused on trying to close the gender gap up in these in these six areas and really try to bring equality for women in the next five years. Next slide, please. We are especially proud to be co-leaders in the Economic Justice and Rights Action Coalition with these actors. And what I've been especially impressed with is that um, by the selection of the hosts, which are the government of Mexico, the government of France and UN Women, we have built this amazing group of people that are deeply technical and deeply invested in a variety of ways to actually accomplishing the blueprints that we're building together to try to achieve uh, economic justice and rights for women uh, in the countries that we work in. Next slide. So as Antonique said, right now in the next three days, you're gonna hear a slew of commitments from various organizations on their commitments to gender equality and women's economic empowerment. But in this moment, we thought it's very important. What are the tools that can bring these commitments to action and actual change on the ground? And so we have had in development for about a year now, something we call the, the IDE, Inclusive Digital Economies and Gender Playbook. It is born from this idea of when I was working in the field and my colleagues were working in the field, it would have been great to have a playbook using like a sports analogy on the different plays or interventions that we could uh, we could consider if we we're trying to address some of the market constraints that exist for women in the countries that we work in. So first the playbook was really for UNCDF, but really it's also for development practitioners working on women's economic empowerment and development partners trying to understand the field and potential interventions. We hope it's a practical how-to guide. We hope, uh, well, we know it's a wealth of research and good practices from leading organizations in the field. Um, we, we wanted to identify common constraints faced by women. We know that it's by no means exhaustive. And it, but what it does do is suggest concrete examples of interventions that can address those constraints. We want this to be a living document that will be updated at some frequency so it can always have the best good practices, the updated good practices, as this is a very fast moving field in, in terms of building inclusive digital economies. Next slide, please. So in how using the playbook, I put the link in again um, there. I hope you might be clicking at it and kind of browsing through it and looking at it as you're listening to us too. Um, it starts with some cheat sheets, especially for those that maybe are less familiar with this field. Some important things to know and background to understand. Then it takes us to the research and diagnostic section, which is a great wealth of information on primary ways that you can conduct your own surveys and secondary research that has a ton of data that that you might need to help identify what the market constraints are for women in the countries that we work in. And then we, we look at the market constraints against that framework that I shared with you earlier, women's skills, infrastructure, innovation, and policy and regulation. Next slide, please. So 
in the market, can, in, in just to give you like kind of a snapshot, as um, you know, you have the the, the playbook um, perhaps open, but the infrastructure section has these six common constraints that we've identified together with our leaders within the UNCDF practices: um, identity identity uh, document ownership, access to phones, access to internet, access to energy, so on and so forth. So these were the six that we identified. Um, next, next slide, please. So as you look at the next slide, you'll see what we did when we do a deep dive into one of the market constraints. If the market constraint or one of the market constraints that you feel is one of the most important for women in your market, here are eight different kinds of interventions you can consider with examples from different countries and guides that will be most helpful for you to review when you're considering whether or not this intervention is right for you. So with that, it's my pleasure to give it back to Diana and Jagdeep Dahia to showcase some of our work in PNG and how the playbook reflects some of that very interesting work and decision making. Back to you, Diana. Thank you so much, Nandini and, and Jagdeep. It's our turn now, your turn actually. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us and, and, and to, for your uh, openness and willingness to share experiences from Papua New Guinea. And maybe we can get started by uh, introducing yourself a little bit about your role and the project that you will be sharing today. Thank you. Thanks so much, Diana and, and Nandini. Um, and good morning, afternoon, good evening, everybody who's listening. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure and privilege to be here on this forum. Um, my name is Jagdeep Dahiya, and I lead the work of UNCDF in Papua New Guinea. And my association with the country has been fairly long. I should say it's, it's getting close to a decade now. Um, I came to PNG first time in 2012. And since then, I have been in and out, uh, but in this role for the last almost four years now. Um, and having been in the, in the financial inclusion and financial services space for, uh, for uh, over 15 years, um, I think PNG is one fascinating place, um, as we call it, as the land of unexpected. Um, and I add two more worlds full of, uh, full of opportunities at the moment. Um, this is one fascinating place where you can see the barter system and the cutting edge latest technologies, including blockchains and, and IoTs working simultaneously in, in, in one same geography. So it's, it's a fascinating, fantastic country. Um, for, for those who don't know PNG, it's one of the most diverse places under the sun mm -hmm. with over 900 different languages in a small country with a population of less than 10 million. Um, and this 10 million is actually on a higher side when we look at the Pacific small island countries, uh, nearly double of the size of New Zealand. Um, with 80% of the population predominantly in rural areas, um, and then the challenges are wide with due to rugged terrains, being a, a, a country of small islands, uh, highlands, the mountainous region, and, and swamp. So, so it's, a, it's a very fascinating country to be in. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Jagdeep. I really like uh, how you said that it's the land of unexpected, but also the land of, of opportunities, because uh, it's it's a great, you know, framework to to start thinking about innovations and solutions. And I would like to um, learn a little bit more, if you can share a little bit more using the framework of the playbook, right? Thinking about constraints. Uh, if you can share a little bit more about the the constraints women are facing, uh, you know, some of the more specific ones, I think, uh, in, in, in the case of your project were related to infrastructure and innovation. But um, maybe, you know, if we can go one by one, but uh, I know one of the key constraints is related to the digital services not being accessible to women and girls. Can you tell us a little bit more about how uh, this initiative have, uh, has addressed uh, that con uh, constraint? Right. Thanks. Thanks, Diana. Um, so talking about uh, the development challenges in PNG, they are huge as well as, uh, as, um, as I mentioned. Uh, and infrastructure certainly being one of the more uh, difficult ones to tackle. Um, so as I was mentioning, it's a, it's a difficult geography. 
Uh, at the same time, when you talk about TNG, 85% um, of the population is off the grid. Um, and perhaps only 11% of the population have access to internet. Uh, and roughly around 75 to 80% of the population have, have connectivity, but then the real subscribers for mobile phones is again limited to less than 30% of the population. So you see that basically for digital financial services, there are constraints in the first place. And then on top of it, when we talk about women, it becomes even more severe. And, and, and then looking at it from the financial services perspective, uh, around 37% of the population have access to formal financial services. They have very limited number of financial intermediaries in PNG, and this is one of the countries with, with I would say, rather uh, very low um, branch to, uh, to, to, to people uh, ratio. And most of these branches that you see of the banking system or the financial institutions are all concentrated into urban centers. Therefore, it becomes even more difficult for people in the rural areas to access services because one, they need to travel to the places with uh, difficult terrains, um, lack of infrastructure, public transport. It becomes really cost prohibitive for people to access those services. And then there is also issues around um, the law and order. Um, so the incidence of crime are fairly high. And then that is even more true for uh, for gender-based violence, which is, uh, which is another big challenge in PNG's context. So when you look at all these mix of, of issues and challenges, it becomes really difficult for women folks who are rather um, less literate, do not have mobile phones. It's difficult for them to travel to, uh, to places to access services. It becomes real serious challenges. Um, so what we decided to do with, uh, with one of our partners, Women's Microbank, which is um, the fifth institution in the world, which is women focused and the first in the Pacific and, and the youngest kid on the block in PNG's context as a regulated <laughs> financial institution. So we decided to, to work with them in terms of setting up something called as Mama Bank Access Points. So mama is a, is a term referred to for women in PNG and that's how we usually refer to women there. So these mama bank access points are biometric enabled, making use of a tablet and a, and a biometric reader attached to a Bluetooth printer. That's all the apparatus that you need and you, it's easy to replicate into rural areas. So we, we tested this, that model. Um, to bring multiple benefits to the woman. So they don't need to carry a phone or not even a passbook. Uh, these services can be brought closer to the woman and you don't need to be literate or you don't need to remember a password or sign the document. It's your thumb impression that helps you do transactions. So that's basically how we, we try to overcome some of these challenges, particularly related to, uh, to, to the infrastructure as you mentioned. Uh, thank you, Jagdeep. And, and related to that, now the bank is next to the, you know, the, the bank is next to the woman. But uh, what about constraints related to innovation, such as the products themselves, not meeting the needs and preferences of, of women clients and <clears throat> still the limit, limitations in access for women owned businesses. How, how are those, <clears throat> excuse me, constraints uh, addressed by these, uh, you know, by the technology, but also by the product services features. Anything that you can share related to um, how the how the services, in fact, meet the needs, preferences, and also how women operate in Papua New Guinea. Certainly, thanks. So, if you see uh, one of the interesting things about Papua New Guinea, and I think that's. Uh, that's quite common in Southeast Asia as well, is if you go to any market, uh, you see most of the, the shops or the stalls are, are basically uh, managed by women. Um, and, and that's the same thing that you see in PNG. So it's, it's the women who are on the forefront of the economic activity. Um, there are small entrepreneurs, which are called as uh, often referred to as table mamas. So they will have a small table and stuff on that that they would, be, they would be selling and trading. And then there are dedicated markets 
where you see fruits, vegetables, and, and fresh produce being sold. Now, these are, these are the real grassroots level uh, women. And as you mentioned, certainly there are challenges in terms of the ability of the financial institutions to reach out to these people. Um, and, and the first challenge is the access, which I just, re- just talked about. So the Mama Bank Access Point gives them the opportunity not only to do transactions online, but even if there is an internet connectivity failure, you are still able to do the transactions uh, and you are able to, um, to access your account. And it's, it's much closer to you. So you don't have to leave your shop, go to the, to the bank, which often are, are fairly far. So that's, that's one. We also supported Women's Microbank through a loan facility um, which was specifically focused on women entrepreneurs. So that way we try to address the issue that not sufficient funds goes into that, that micro micro category where the loan size is even as low as $100 in some cases. Um, and, and that's something that we, we try to address through this. So, so the access points, which gives you the convenience, which gives you the safety and security, and you don't have to go through the whole brick and mortar structure, which by the way is also uh, difficult to set up in PNG's context just because of the cost of operations, but yeah. also the regulatory requirements that you need to fulfill in order to, to set up a branch. Mm-hmm. So this, this model actually helps us to go further closer to the women, make it convenient for them. And then these access points, which are again, uh, all the staff or majority of the staff that actually man it uh, are also uh, also women. So it also is much more easier for women to interact. It's pretty simple, just a thumb impression. Um, and it helps helps them with convenience, with access and the confidence to really be, be comfortable with their money. Mm-hmm. And I, I appreciate how um, this is a great point by one of the solutions, in fact, addresses several types of constraints, right? The physical access, the regulatory. Uh, so that's, that's a really interesting point. And I would like to uh, ask my colleague uh, to, to put up the slides with just summarizing again, the, the constraints that, that we discussed uh, related to, to the project in, in Papua New Guinea. Uh, and of course, Jagdeep, if there's, if there's anything else that you'd like to share, but just to bring it back to, to the way the playbook is, is organized by constraints and then by experiences and proven so, uh, evidence uh, of how these constraints have been addressed in, in other markets or by different interventions. Uh, I would like, again, to invite everyone to access the playbook and, and review uh, you know, the, the sections on infrastructure and on innovation. And, and on the next slide, you can see uh, an example of how the playbook uh, organizes uh, this information. Uh, so we, we discuss a constraint, we narrow focusing on a constraint, and then each constraint then has a range of solutions and resources uh, attached to it that that users can can access. So please uh, please click on the link. And a reminder to everyone that if you have questions uh, for Jagdeep or any of the speakers, please drop them in the chat. And then uh, at the end of the session, I will come back uh, and and, uh, refer the questions to the different speakers. But Jagdeep, this was really, really interesting and 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 so um, inspiring also that the kinds of solutions and interventions that that you were able to to develop in such a challenging context. I think you know this point it's it's unlike many other places that we might be working in. so it's it's interesting to to hear those examples that you've you've shared. So thank you so much. Um, Please, uh, for uh, all the all the participants, drop questions in the chat for Jagdeep, and then uh, we can maybe now um, invite Maria Thanks, to share Diana. examples. Just, just the final comment, Mar- yes. uh, uh, Diana. Uh, in the very first instance, when we ex- we asked uh, the people to share expectations, they mentioned access, equitable, and unique issues for women. I think this is one way where we have tried to address these three challenges at one go and you can find more details in the in the playbook so thank you for that absolutely thank you so much Jagdeep. 
thank you. And and now uh, let's let's hear um, turn to an example, an experience from Bangladesh. And I would like to invite Maria uh, on the stage to uh, to introduce. Maria, you're here. Okay, I see. I see your screen. Uh, please just introduce yourself a little bit about the role uh, and the, about the initiative that you will be discussing, sharing with us today. Thank you. Sure. Um, so just an introduction. So, well, so this is, well, first of all, this is one of the projects uh, that we're um, doing in Bangladesh that are part of a much larger agenda within our strategy of leaving no one behind in the digital area, right? So this uh, particular project is one um, that falls into one of our pillars of work or work streams and one on skills. We have one on policy, we have one on infrastructure, we have one on innovations and one on skills. And this particular one um, falls into that category. And it's about really making sure that uh, people, uh, in particular women, have the, uh, the, the, the right skills to not only access, but also uh, usage. The, the, sorry, not only access, but also use uh, digital and financial services. So this is a little bit uh, an overview of the program, and then I can go deeper in, as to what, what it means, OK? Yes, definitely, Maria. Thank you so much. I, I guess my next question was, uh, you know, what are some of the market constraints uh, that okay. um, your initiative in, in the skills in, in the skills pillar is addressing, and um, what are the constraints, and and how what kind of initiatives are you designing to address them? And I know, uh, you okay. know, to reference things back to the playbook, uh, I think. Okay. Uh, the, the constraints for this is in the skills and innovation areas as well, but I'll let you describe them and then maybe I can summarize with uh, some other things that are available in the playbook for, for the participants. Perfect, Juliana, but sorry, before I go there, let me give you a little bit of the context of Bangladesh, okay, so that we can uh, maybe situate the, um, the participants and in where Definitely. we are, okay, so what are those problems that are uh, facing women entrepreneurs in Bangladesh. So first, let me uh, give you some data about MSMEs. We know that um, MSMEs are the driving force behind the Bangladesh economy. They account for uh, close to 90% of the jobs uh, in the country and 25% of the GDP. Uh, obviously, the pandemic has brought a uh, crisis into their growth, right? Uh, now, this is particularly the case for women-owned, uh, managed, or led businesses, which are only 2.2% per, 2 uh, 2 of total SMEs in the country. I'd like to maybe link here with what Jackie was saying, that yes, although you find a lot of um, small businesses where women are at the front of the business, when it comes to um, the formal SME, the one that is uh, bigger, et cetera, then these women become, it's like a film, right? It becomes um, less and less and less to the point that we have in Bangladesh that only 72% of SMEs are owned by women. Now, um, if something has been made it clear about the pandemic is that uh, MSMEs that are more resilient to the crisis are those that are using digital solutions, right? Uh, and in particular, those are these digital solutions to bring their, uh, their, uh, their products out to the clients. Uh, now, before the pandemic, and this is a very interesting story about Bangladesh, uh, the e-commerce market in the country was estimated to uh, grow to $3 billion uh, by 2023. Now, that target was just hit. And that in part is thanks to all the explosion that the pandemic has uh, had on digital technologies and digital solutions, in particular e-commerce uh, e commerce platforms, right? Unfortunately here, women are being left behind from this digital revolution. Not only because they, are, they were already underrepresented in terms of SME ownership, right? Or because it was already more difficult for them to access finance to start up or expand their businesses but also because they're less likely than men to benefit and participate in the digital economy. Let me give you some data here. Uh, there is a 34% gender gap in mobile ownership in Bangladesh, right? 
So if they don't have the tools to access digital uh, solutions, then that's the very first uh, thing that we have to address, right? Then there's a 66% gender gap in mobile, mo mobile money ownership, right? So not only the device, but also when it comes to make payments and using that device for making payments, access payments, et cetera, it's, the gender gap is even wider. 41% gender gap in internet usage. Big data, right? Now- Those are big numbers, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> now, and then preliminary results of UNCDF's IDIS tool, for those of you who are not familiar with IDIS, is our uh, inclusive digital economy scorecard that it helps us uh, measure the evolution of the digital economy that in Bangladesh will be launched next month, right? So preliminary results of IDIS shows that there is a gender digital divide of 36%, okay? So with the project that we're trying to, to do here, the one that I mentioned at the beginning, the one on digital um, and um, digital skills, which uh, is being brought to UNCDF thanks to the generosity of Visa, uh, and the name is Building Bank Better in Bangladesh, we're trying to address the issue of inclusivity of women in e-commerce platform through strengthening their digital and entrepreneurial skills. So that's what we're trying to do. Now, if we want to go back to your other question, what about what are the market constraints that are that we're trying specifically to address with this product, right? Mm -hmm. There are two in particular, right? So at the beginning, I, I, I told you that this project was uh, under the umbrella at, of a much higher or a greater um, strategy, right? On digital inclusion, right? So mm -hmm. this one is only for the steel part. Okay, so let's yeah. focus on that. I'm not gonna talk about police, I'm not gonna talk about other things, right? So here, first one, uh, first market constraint, women have lower levels of financial capability, literacy, numeracy, and education than men. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, here, one thing that we're trying to do is we partner uh, with uh, two private sector uh, companies. Okay, one is Shopa, uh, which is one of Bangladesh uh, B2B platforms for neighboring shops and online centers. Okay, and another one with Iksha, which is another platform that is in particularly just focusing in building financial capabilities and digital capabilities of people like you and me. Okay, so. It's, it's a partnership, if you want, between between this, uh, between UNCDF and two providers. One that is arriving more to the women towards this e-commerce platform, and another one that is arriving to the women with a very specific value proposition on uh, financial capabilities and digital capabilities. Um, so that's one part. Another one is we the, the, the project was actually launched last month with an assessment. Mm -hmm of the digital and financial capabilities of, 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 the, of, the, of the potential users of these uh, digital solutions and the clients that are using it already. And one of the biggest things that was found or biggest uh, finding, yeah, my biggest findings of, the, of this assessment was in fact that the much lower numeracy um, levels of women in comparison, in comparison to men. So that for now, it's telling us that the modules that are going to be provided in financial literacy and uh, digital literacy and business skills will need to be brought down uh, in terms of numeracy uh, so that women can uh, access more of that education and be better prepared to then participate so in- Tailored the to the situation, yeah. Exactly, exactly, mm. exactly. Um, and then another one, uh, is the use of different media, mass media, uh, radio posters, drops and clinics, which is, which is, are things that are said in the, in the, in the playbook, right? That we, mm -hmm. we need to do, right? And uh, thanks to the guidance of our colleagues from uh, Nandini and others, we were also a, uh, working with these two partners to make sure that all the uh, marketing, um, if you want marketing activities, promotions, 
have wide, uh, a wide range of delivery channels, uh, in particular those that are rich in women. This is, I think, particularly uh, important for the e-commerce platform that has had difficulties in attracting women owners, uh, business owners to their platform. So I think that there's a there's a big effort to, to be to be made there. Great, thank you, Maria. And I just want to give participants a heads up that uh, we are going to have a participatory exercise on this very topic in a minute, in a second. Uh, so please get ready. But just to summarize, and, and maybe Rose, you can bring up that slide. Uh, Maria very nicely uh, offered uh, a few examples of how these types of market constraints uh, are being addressed uh, in the project mm -hmm. in, in Bangladesh, uh, specifically focused on partnerships uh, with local providers, uh, covering uh, you know the range of topics um, that you know e-commerce, financial capability, digital capability, and then spreading the word, getting the women aware uh, about all of these solutions and 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 opportunities that this project will bring. Uh, so. Again, uh, on the next slide, you will see uh, a range of additional um, solutions uh, offered, included in the playbook, and examples of other initiatives uh, doing exactly the same. So uh, to reiterate, the playbook is a treasure trove of solutions, information, uh, links to uh, proven uh, experiences uh, from, from other prog programs. So, please, uh, I invite you to, to go through it uh, and, and, and take a look. Um, and then uh, Maria, maybe now uh, if you, we can move to the, to the participatory exercise, get everybody, yes. uh, get all the brains working now to, to help us uh, crowdsource some ideas, solutions on this very, very topic on getting more women on e-commerce platforms. And I think there is a link in the chat uh, that my colleague just shared. Uh, so if everybody can click uh, the link to this, uh, it's just going to be a document with stickies that everybody can use to share their ideas. And then Maria, you can walk us through it. Yeah. Okay, so basically, okay, so we want you to help us answer two questions. Oh, there's some sticky notes here that are are preventing me to <laughs> see. So what challenges do e-commerce platforms face when they try to attract women entrepreneurs? And the second one is how can we help e-commerce companies to overcome this challenge? Okay, so please, um, I have, um, okay, so where, <laughs> the one is where are the women? Okay, maybe it's, uh, please go ahead, please go ahead and, and start uh, putting your ideas here. So you can just click on the sticky and uh, perfect. We can see it in, in use. And, and actually I put the one with where are the women and as I thought, you know, one of the challenges is for the platforms to know where to, to find the women who might be interested in using the, using the platforms. One of the things that are, uh, and this is, um, this, this we faced this problem, right? When we started the project and gathering baseline, right? So they do have information about how many businesses are part of the, uh, of the platform already, but they don't have a lot of it. Well, they don't have actually, they don't gather and collect information about, uh, they don't, uh, disaggregate that information by sex. So it's very difficult for them to know. I mean, what doesn't get measured doesn't get done, right? So um, it's, um, it's, it's one of the challenges, I guess, uh, um, that they're facing to reach um, women, right? They see women have less access to internet, mobile phone, exactly, and financial account. How do they reach out to the women? Okay, so one of the things, again, is to make sure yeah, I mean, that you use um, a wide range of uh, delivery channels. Uh, one of the things that we're trying um, in other countries as well as is uh, using chat box. We know that um, women might have lower literacy rates in general than men. 
So a way to um, overcome that barrier is to chat about some of the information rather than uh, text messages, for example, or using those chatbots as a way to deliver financial literacy or digital literacy. That's another way. Um, financial literacy capabilities, internet access. Um, maybe platforms need to train businesses on management. Well, digital financial literacy. How do they work on, on pipeline? Informal online commerce. UNESCO just came out with great research on women's Facebook entrepreneurs in Bangladesh. Yeah, no, in, indeed. Um, no, indeed, and thank you for bringing that up. UNESCO is actually another one of our, our, our major partners in the region, and we do uh, work together with them in, 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 in this um, digital economy in Bangladesh. And uh, we, yes, uh, thank you for the suggestion. We will reach out to our colleagues in ESCAP to see how we can improve this part as well. Good. Um, women in rural areas are less likely to access uh, or use digital tools or even use smartphones despite being entrepreneurs. Agree. And that is because of the, yeah, I mean, it has, it has a lot of, um, well, access to phones, um, which is lower uh, for women than men, for example, uh, internet connection or broad, broadband, broad, broadband connectivity is also an issue. We also saw at the beginning that uh, 41, there's a gender um, um, gap of 41% in terms of uh, internet usage, for example, so that it's even greater in rural areas. So thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, Some women do um, solutions promote role model and examples of successful women. On that's a great solutions to promote role models and examples of successful women on e-commerce platform. There was another one that Anthony was uh, suggesting uh, uh, in the previous section that it was about making sure that um, um, that those. Um, promoting the services are also women. So this could also be something along those lines. We have also tried in other countries, um, like some kind, some sort of like peer to peer um, models uh, where women feel more comfortable talking to women. Uh, and that could be also a way to increase the number of women uh, owned enterprises being part of this e-commerce platform, making yeah. sure that other women um perhaps uh talk about that with them etc yeah, um this is a great this is a great board and i i don't want to reiterate that uh, we will leave this link with you <laughs> uh and and hope uh, to get more more of the challenges and and also solutions to to some of these challenges uh mm -hmm. and it's also a perfect example and i don't want to skip ahead to to closing remarks but the playbook is a living document so this is a perfect example of how we're inviting contributions from from our colleagues mm -hmm. on you know what else can we include in the playbook uh, and what other experiences and, and resources. Uh, so this this is fantastic. Uh, I think maybe we can we can move uh, move along if there are no other burning inputs on on the jam board. And I would like to again, uh, Maria, thank you so much for for what you shared and also for facilitating this, this exercise. That was fantastic. And for everyone in attendance, please drop questions that you may have for Maria or contributions in the chat as well. Um, and maybe we can uh, we can move to the more formal uh, Q&A uh, component of, of the session today. And I see Jagdeep got lots of questions and Jagdeep, thank you for answering some of them directly in the chat. That was that's helping me a lot. <laughs> I do want to maybe we have time for two questions, maybe one of the questions that were posed for Jagdeep and then if anything else comes through uh, for for Maria. But uh, and, and again, Jagdeep, you answered some of these, but I would like to, to come back to one of the questions uh, related to 
challenges in getting women on board uh, with the new technology. Uh, you've answered, uh, you've answered a little bit, but I think we're all hungry for knowing the details and 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 knowing maybe a little bit more uh, on on very specific challenges and solutions on getting women on actually using using this this new technology. So if you can share a little bit more on that, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Diana, and thanks for the questions. Um, of course, adoption of uh, of technology is, is always the challenging part. Um, it's much easier to get the software and the hardware organized, but the humanware it takes much much longer. Um, so so that's uh, that's probably the the challenge. Um, what you see in this particular uh, model as unique thing is uh, these Mama Bank access points are not third party agents. So these are the people who are staff of the organization who actually run the, the access points. So for us, it was more about making sure that those people who are right into the, the rural areas are able to access that technology. Um, they are provided with the tablets and, and the biometrics, so they should be able to, uh, to use that effectively and, and see how it, it functions or, or in some cases malfunctions. Um, and, and so what, what, uh, that, was a, that was more of a learning thing. Now, from the customer point of view, if you see, um, the big positive of this, uh, this model is that they don't have to do much. So the, the, the transactions are not initiated by the customer. You don't have to use your mobile to start a transaction or do anything. It's all about you go to the counter and you say, if you want to make a withdrawal, you say, I want to make a withdrawal of X amount. And then you put your thumb on the on the biometric reader, and your account details come to the uh, to the teller, and then she will process the transaction, hand over the money to you, and the receipt, and you are good to go. So, from a customer point of view, it was very easy. One of the interesting challenges that came, uh, which just crossed my mind, is that often these women uh, in the rural areas and who are working in markets, their their hands are soiled or dirty. You know, they would walk in, they put it on the on the biometric, and it's it doesn't recognize them. So these were initial challenges, and 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 we learned while doing it. So they would basically ask the people to um, to clean the the fingers, go wash their hands, and, and then try it again. And the other thing that we did is we also decided to take not one or two fingers, but all fingers uh, data to be recorded. So in case you are not able to access with one, there is some issue, you at least have a backup and, and there is a, there is a follow-up. Uh, one last point I think, which is important to mention here is these biometrics at the moment are not something which is accepted as a KYC in, in, in PNG's context. So this is over and above the KYC, which is required by the central bank, right? So even when you have to open an account, you have to go through the normal process but then this biometric solution is, is an add-on feature which the bank provides because then after you have become a customer, it makes your life much easier. Um, so I think that answers the question. Yes. Happy to take yes. any more uh, Thank you so much. Uh, and, and it really highlights, you know, some of the unexpected challenges, right? Uh, and the, the very context specific challenges and the innovations and the, the quick thinking, thinking on, on the feet of the, you know, the tellers uh, for, for solving as well, in addition to, to the product itself and the technology and, and so on. And um, I'm sorry, I think I lied. Uh, I said that we have time for two questions, but I'm, I'm looking at the time right now and perhaps uh, what we can promise is that we're going to look through the chat and if there are any questions that we were not able to answer live we will uh, we will include in the follow-up materials uh, we will we will send everyone who attended the link to the playbook again uh, the recording of this session and uh, any answers to any unanswered question i would like to really share the floor now with antonique who graciously agreed to 
to do a quick wrap up. We promised her more time, but um, <laughs> I know she's very capable of doing everything in one minute, one minute I and can, a half. So I, Anthony, I can do please. this. I can do this very fast. Thank you so much. <laughs> Lots of great input and suggestions. I see uh, charity's questions here. The problems are the same everywhere. What are the solutions? I think this session has illustrated that the playbook gives you an anchor. It gives you an overview of constraints, and we've given you exact examples of those constraints constraints, and then the kind of solutions. There, there's inspiration in the playbook that hopefully you can take uh, forward. Um, and I really think that these illustrations of Jack Deep leveraging technology and then focusing on the human hardware and, and Maria's uh, notion of innovation, building back better and, and focusing on the partnerships you need for that are really good examples of what you can do to positively um, uh, move uh, forward. So what I hope that you will do is that you use the playbook for what it is for and that, as Diana just said, that you also contribute to it. Let's make this and really create this as a living document and as you have examples of successes or failures that we can all learn from, contribute. UNCDF and FinEquity are open to your suggestions and ideas to make this a truly helpful resource for people like yourselves in the field. So with that, I think we um, end maybe with a, a slide on where you can find more or where you can post more on FinEquity and in UNCDF. And with that, I thank you all very much for this rich exchange and Look forward to continuing the conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much and to all the speakers. And we look forward to hearing to hearing from you.